Yeah, and, and you said it about in the old days, people knew how to do it themselves. Now, I own, I own a 1994 Audi. I could buy anything that I want to buy. I don't want one of those cars. I don't, want it. I don't need all those gadgets. You know, kick the addiction. And by the way, stop wasting your money and going to college and getting a degree in business administration. Now, this is a lot of baloney. If you're going to go to college, only do it for a skill that you can get a return on investment. That's one of the biggest rackets in this country. We talk about the military industrial complex. We talk about big pharma, big, big food. It's also the college industrial complex. This is one of the greatest scams going on in the world. I love it. Oh, my, my son got a scholarship. Oh, not a full scholarship, a partial scholarship. Now, how much is it going to cost? Oh, only about $20,000 a year. Oh, it would have cost $40,000 a year. Yeah, you know what it's like? It's like going to one of these bazaars in Turkey where they give you, oh, you could buy it for this price. They'll get any dollar that they can get. You're wasting your money, sending your kid to school if they're not going to get a diploma that's going to buy them a job. Stop this nonsense and put the money to, to good use. And if you want to get a skill in business administration, start as an apprentice working for somebody. But that's the way it was done. That's the way it was done. I mean, I read about the founding fathers and then Andrew Jackson. They were all apprentices. That's how they got their law degree. That's how they got their professorship, is, 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 that, is that there were a lot of people that wanted to be apprentices. They only took the people that were smart and willing to work, and that's what built this country was the apprenticeship system. Exactly. People are wasting. These kids are getting out of college with $50,000 in debt, and they can't get a job stocking shelves at Walmart at one in the morning. I want to go to calls. Time goes so fast with Gerald Salente. Um, man, we could spend 10 hours with him here. Uh, I want to go to calls and ask you some other questions, but quickly, the, you've said some terrorist stage, some of it's provocateur, we know that's true, but you said no, 2010, Pakistan is going to start attacking. You said small attacks, but also leading to huge attacks as big as 9-11, and now we see the situation with Pakistan. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I mean, how did you predict that? It's so easy to see. The, the, the President Obama, the uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner, you know, I, I wonder if Norway is Orwell spelled backwards. <laughs> They've expanded that war in, in Pakistan, this brilliant AFPAC strategy. You know, these, these swivel chair generals and secretaries of this and that coming up with these wonderful strategies they're going to weed out the Taliban and Al-Qaeda on the Afghan-Pakistan borders. So Pakistan is fighting this huge war. They're, there's the greatest refugee crisis since Rwanda. They've now announced yesterday, uh, CNN, 1,000 drones, and it says the kids piloting these by remote are allowed, in fact, print that again for me, to kill anybody they want with no evidence. They just said th that they can just kill anybody who, quote, acts like a gorilla. I, I know. These are called extrajudicial killings, white shoe boy languages. And it's also what it is, it's against international law. So what's happening is President Obama has already, I think it's 34 major drone uh, strikes this year, and uh, bi-weekly. And by the way, the CIA is, is, is behind it, and they're not supposed to be involved in these kind of things. So now here's the scenario. Your family gets killed. Your relatives are slaughtered, maimed. They've lost everything because of a huge proxy war that Washington is fighting in, in, in Pakistan. You think you want to get even? Has nothing to do with al-Qaeda or, or, uh, or, or the Taliban. Oh, it may, but there's other things. It's as old as the Old Testament. It's called revenge, and we're going to see revenge attacks. And then, Alex, they come up with this fairy tale that by waging this war, we're going to weed out the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda on these borders of Pakistan and Afghanistan. Oh, you are, are you? 
How about getting rid of the Bloods and the Crips in Los Angeles? Just start there before you move around the country. They can't do that. Who in their right mind believes these fairy tales? It's the military-industrial complex that Eisenhower, that Smedley Butler, and other great Americans warned us about. And they know. These guys... And they know sorry, go that it's going to cause people to attack. And they want the attacks as a pretext to take our freedoms. Exactly. So this is why we're talking about the economics collapse, the economic collapse coming from many different directions. Because just like now, what happened? The oil spill was all over the news. It drained from the news when the Times Square bomber surfaced. Well, you know, we've confirmed they were running a drill. That whole thing looks suspicious to me. But again, what they'll do when there's a terrorist strike, the people will rally behind the president. Look, they did it with Bush. 92% of the people wanted to go attack Afghanistan. To bring back Osama bin Laden, dead or alive, it's nine years later. Yeah, what did what did the Iranians have quoted that he said he's in Washington? G Gerald, we're going to come back and take some calls and ask some quick questions and cover any other trends that you want to discuss here with us. Gerald Salente is our guest. Uh, but going out of break, I want to come back and have you answer this question briefly. Uh, when you talk about a great war, that's what governments always do when they're imploding, is they launch a big war, World War III style, as a political distraction. I mean, is that what you're basically saying is coming? We're saying World War III is on the way. The riots in Greece will spread across Europe, will spread east into Ukraine, into Latvia, Estonia. The world is going to be on fire. All right, we got Gerald this segment, the next, and Bob Chapman, the Who Done It. What really happened yesterday with the thousand point plunge? What's happening in the markets and more of your calls? I've got some Twitter questions and Randy, uh, Shanky, Joe, Jeff, and Fred, and others. But a quick question, Gerald Salente. There's a lot of drum beating by the FCC, by the media, by the governments of the world to censor the Internet. Uh, a, when do you see this World War III thing being launched? B, do you see them trying to clamp down on the web? Well, when it happens, they will clamp down on the web. When they lose control, every, every, every aspect where they lose control they will try to double up and gain more control. The war is happening now. Uh, it was announced uh, just uh, two days ago that President Obama is going to step up the attacks in Pakistan. It, it, from Pakistan, it, it, it could explode into India. We don't know what Israel is going to do with Iran. The whole Middle East is up for grabs. There is no peace process. It's only getting worse over there. We can't put a specific date on it. But it's in the making. And unless the people really become aware of it, stand up and, 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 and step out and, and speak out, then we're doomed. All it's right, up let's, to the people. Let's go to calls. Randy in Texas, thanks for holding. Go ahead. Quick question. Uh, what do you recommend ordinary citizens do with their assets, hard assets? More, more precisely, what type should we get into? Well, I, I'm... I'm not allowed uh, by law to provide financial advice. That's why I always make it clear, this is what I would do. And what I've done, and I've said it over and over again, is very simple for me. I buy gold, 80%. The rest of my money, I have hedged. I'm in dollars, and I'm in Canadian dollars. One goes up, the other goes down. All I want is wealth preservation. Gold is my wild card. The other ones, all I want to do is stay here. That's right. In this game, gold could be, and this is for me personally, speculatively it could go way up. But bottom line, it has real intrinsic value, and so it is an emergency backup. It's insurance. I'm not looking in this danger zone to have big increases, though gold is doing that. I'm looking at wealth preservation. Thank you, Randy. Shanky in Georgia, you're on the air with, Bo with uh, Gerald Salente. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Uh... Thanks. Uh, congratulations, both you and Gerald, for uh, the great success y'all are having and getting the word out. I uh, really appreciate what y'all are doing. Uh, my question resolves. Uh, y'all were talking about uh, money, uh, holding cash, taking the money out of the banks. A lot of the questions I get are revolve around 401ks and IRAs. And um, 
you know, with the reflation trade and, and the potential of a failed treasury auction and uh, all the monetization, uh, they, they have discussed basically what they're discussing in Greek, Greece taking over the pension plan. Uh, Gerald, do you think they'll take the 401k, the IRA monies, and force it into treasuries to uh, keep this com country alive as long as possible? If, if a war breaks out, that could be one of the things that they do. They're, Again, they're, what they'll use is they'll use a war or a terror attack to take any draconian measures that they can and hide behind them. We saw it with Bush with the abrogation of so many of our rights under the Patriot Act, with the, you know, the, with the wiretapping, on and on and on. Yes, it becomes a probability. And unfortunately, I'm stuck in situations, too. You know, I have to put money in IRAs. I mean, I get taxed very heavily. You know, so I have my money floating out in that as well. But again, my strategy is it's in, and I know the downsides, believe me, but I have to do something. I have my money in, um, in uh, ETFs. 